Happy World Environment Day. And I know there's a lot of initiatives that focus on planting new trees. I think that's cool, especially if it's in a place, you know, where we've clear cut all the trees out and we really need to get trees back in. But of equal of importance, if not of more importance, is conserving existing amazing trees. My name is Thaddeus. Welcome to my ranch. So here we are at Smith Flat and here's a, the remnants of a huge, just magical valley oak. So here's a good example of how important native grasses are. So when you look at, like all these grasses are dying, right? But look, we have this one blue rye, it's still totally green. Here's another one over here, totally green. Why are they so green? Because they have deeper root systems. So they're able to get pull moisture out from further down the ground. These grasses here, they just have these really, really shallow root systems. That's all that they have for roots. And you know, if we look at these blue ones, I can't even, look, I'm pulling as hard as I can. I can't get him out because he's so rooted into the ground. This is what grasses used to be 100 years ago or 200 years ago before the native or before the um, European grasses kind of came and took over. And so imagine this valley oak. Underneath this valley oak, you know, we have some remnants of them, but it was just solid blue, you know, blue rye, purple needle grass, deep rooted plants that stayed green for a lot longer. The other benefit to this is when fire would come through, which it would come through, it doesn't burn as hot because they're perennials. These things can be hundreds of years old, same grass, hundreds of years old, just getting a, bit, a little bigger, deeper roots every year, pulling all that moisture up out of the ground. And so when a fire comes through, yes, they burn, but they don't burn nearly as hot. And then they grow back the next year. And that was the environment that created this beautiful valley oak here. And this, you know, who, why this die? I don't know, but it's kind of sad, but kind of beautiful in a strange way. And I think, how can we manage this property in a way, you know, to preserve the remaining valley oaks that have already made it so far? How do we get them to be this big? That's my goal. Yeah, right, isn't this crazy? Now look, we found a little deer nest. If I was a deer, I'd live here. That's probably where, oh look, there's another one over there. Beautiful, this is like a ginormous oak tree. So part of ranching, in my opinion, is if you're gonna use the land, you wanna manage it in a way that promotes the things that you want. I love oak trees. And imagine how beautiful it'd be if, if, if all of this was this, this is blue rye. Okay, so here we are at Smith Flat Ranch, and you'll notice there's a lot of dead trees. And so there was a fire that came through here a few years ago. And for thousands of years, in the summer, a lightning, a lightning storm would happen and it would burn off the grass. And there were native grasses, so they had deep roots and they never burned that warm. They never burned that hot. And then when we started farming and ranching and getting good at putting out fires in the 50s and 60s, we completely changed the ecosystem and there was just a lot of stuff that grew. So we had grasses that would dry, like these are gonna dry and get really hot when they burn. But more importantly, we had a lot of shrubs and stuff that would never get knocked back by fire on a routine basis. And so after 50 years, a fire came through here and look at these oak trees. You know, this is a, an oak tree, this was an oak tree these guys were oak trees and they'd probably lasted hundreds of years, but they couldn't make it through this fire because it just got too hot. So when you see all these areas, in particular, this kind of stuff, which is manzanita, and this is a really, really hot wood. Like when it catches on fire, it burns, you know, like kerosene. And so there's just so much stuff in here that it was too hot and that's why the oak trees died. And when you look behind us, 
we're gonna cruise over here. This is an example of what should happen. So here we have uh, these oak trees and we have a lot of grass and still granted the grass is, is not native, much of it. But you can see where the oak trees have some space Right in here, oak trees had some space, fire came through here. There just wasn't anything hot enough to kill these oak trees. Look at, they're all living. But even when you just look over at this little section, these trees that are really close together, if there was a normal fire, that wouldn't have, if we burned routinely, this would have been thinned out naturally. If you look at this manzanita, right? This got pretty hot. And, it, and so this little pocket of trees died. And you look down there, there's a lot of dead oak trees. There's another part of the ranch where there's some beautiful old um, valley oaks that we're going to go look at. And I hope that we could, you know, get the funds that we need to clean up around those and plant the native grasses under them and make sure that they're in a situation to make it through the next fire. So I think this is the biggest um, oak tree. Just look at how big this tree is, just for scale. You know, look at how high up the flames got. You can see that burnt, burnt up there. You know, it got pretty hot. It made it, but I think we should create a scenario where when the next fire comes through, this oak tree's got a 100% chance of making it. And you can see all the animals making livings out of it. See all those holes? Those are woodpeckers that are pecking holes and storing acorns in there. So what we should do is we should flag off the good stuff, right? And then we should come in here with a bulldozer and clean up and just push all of this stuff out away into a pile that's kind of further away from the trees. And then we slowly start to plant the native grasses that we want, probably purple needle grass. If we do that, then we're gonna end up with an environment for the next fire, which might be in my lifetime, might be in my kid's lifetime, but another fire is going to come through here and we're just gonna set this amazing creature up for success to live hopefully another hundred for hundreds of more years. I mean, just look at this thing. Like if you just, so whatever was under here burned really hot and it went up there. But we go to the other side where we saw those native grasses and it looks way better. You know, it didn't get, the flames did not get all the way up into the canopy. So it's, it's a real thing that um, we can fix. You know, planting a new tree here doesn't help us as much as if we could preserve the existence of this amazing tree by cleaning all this up because it's going to take hundreds and hundreds of years to replace this. So let's take an effort in a moment now to conserve it.